appreciate God Almighty for this opportunity to stand on this exalted altar again. I count it a great privilege and I'm not taking it for granted. I also want to appreciate our Father and the Lord for how God has been helping him to raise giants, youths, teenagers, adults, everybody. We are so grateful for you giving us the opportunity to express our grace. The Lord will continue to multiply you and increase you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so very much. I also want to appreciate all the pastors for giving us this privilege to have this weekend to demonstrate the grace of God upon our lives. I also want to appreciate our patron, Pastor Dr. Oyeleye, uh, Oyeleye. The Lord bless you. We really appreciate we celebrate you. I want to appreciate all the escorts of youth, the youth escorts. Let's jump our hands together for Jesus. You guys are doing wonderfully well. You are doing great for packaging such a program like this. We really appreciate God. Praise the Lord. I have quite a number of things, a lot to say as usual, but I'm hoping that God will help me to manage my time. Can we please rise to our feet, everybody? This is Youth Church. And so, there must be a difference. I'm sorry. Open your Bible in your hands if you have your Bible. We are going to be reading two scriptures together as we go to the Word of God. Two scriptures. Third John chapter 1, verse 2. Third John 1, 2. I will hold there. Third John 1, 2. Let's read together. I want to go. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. Second scripture. We read from Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. A very popular scripture. Are we there? If you are not there, you can look at it on the screen for today. Can we go? Want to go? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to hear your word. We ask, O oh God, that you teach us your word. Open our hearts, our lives, our destinies to your word. Holy Spirit, you are the greatest teacher. Let your anointing rest upon your word and let your word severally divide itself and go ahead and accomplish that which you have sent it to do in our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, this morning I will not speak of my own. These people will not listen to me, but they will listen to your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's have a seat. This morning, like I said, I have a lot to say, and God will help me to manage my time very well. I'm speaking on the roadmap to success. The roadmap to success. Permit me to start by saying for 2021, our theme as a youth is purity and purpose. What did I call it? Our church is a call and response church. What did I call it? Purity and purpose. That is our focus this year. And so we are going to be going in that direction. But for this morning, I am talking on the roadmap to success. And we read from our first text, 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, that says, I wish that you prosper. Another word for prosper is to succeed. The intention of God for every man, every man that is created, by man I mean every individual is to succeed. It is the intention of God for everybody to succeed in whatever endeavors of life that you have chosen. In whatever career that you have chosen. From the introduction of God in Genesis chapter number 1, the beginning, we have seen God as a God of success. Bible says he came down and said he wanted to create heaven and earth. And the first thing he saw was obstacle. He overcame the obstacle. I'm coming there later. 
he succeeded in creating everything he, he desired to create. So, from the very beginning, God was introduced as a God who does not fail. Hallelujah to Jesus. And so this morning, essentially, I want us to learn from God himself some mysteries about success. Then, we also see in the Bible, maybe one person, Joseph, will be going from God to Joseph like that, like that. Because the, the Bible is filled or is full of people who succeeded in godly ways. I am more comfortable making Bible my reference point for success and successful people because we know the source of their success. Because many successes today, that what we call success, we don't know. Hallelujah to Jesus. I wish to hear. I said hallelujah to Jesus. The youth, if the elders are not saying anything, hallelujah to Jesus. I am not necessarily talking to the youth, but of course the youth is our target. One of such people in the Bible that we knew how he rose from nothing to success is Joseph. If I talk about God, we say our oh, God is everything, so he should be successful. But I'm going to tell you some of the mysteries that we, we can learn from that God. But I want to start in a funny way. I want to try to define or tell us what success is not. What did I say? Because we are in a world in which everything is upside down. Adam and Eve, when they discovered that they were naked as a result of their sins, the Bible says they were looking for leaves to cover themselves. But now, people are looking for ways to naked themselves. Everything is what? Upside down. And so the, even the definition of success now is upside down. What we call success, what we think or what we see as a society, as a people, even globally as success, is upside down now. And so there's the need for us to put success in the right perspective as children of God. Because, you know, funnily enough, Jesus does not take us, believers, to talk about the fire of angels. Once you are born again, you come to a camp and you don't live in the world. We live in the world among them for a purpose. But then, we must have our own yardstick of majoring success so that we will not be inundated and corrupted, intimidated by what they call success. Praise God. The word success has been mis- I mean, misused, abused in such a way that some people commit suicide because they think they have not measured up to the standard of what people call success. The dictionary meaning of encounter, let me give you one of the definitions they give of success for you to know that the definition of success in the world, if you are not very careful, you will kill yourself. The success is said to be a wealthy, famous, and powerful person because of achievement. So if I'm not famous, I'm not a success. According to the standard of the world. If I don't have wealth, I'm not a success. So, I'm going to be listing about five or six things that success is not. Because I know I'm talking to the youth who are moved by certain things. By what they see, but by what they think. By a society that is so corrupt that man is marrying man. Woman is marrying woman. So to the youth and to everybody. What, is, what success is not? Number one, success is not sudden wealth. All right, Gigi. How many of you know my car? The car that I'm using. I came with another car this morning. It's not my car. I'm coming from location. I took it. Some people are already celebrating me. Ah, I, go, I said it's not my own. If tomorrow now, 
Next Sunday, I brought Vensa. The other Sunday, I brought one rig jeep like this. Do you know people will come and celebrate me? They will not even find out what I did. And I teach in a private secondary school. So, success is not sudden wealth. Because what some people celebrate is, ah, if you see that boy now, if I use your, our language, one knee, what you blow? Kilo blow, what you know? Suddenly, see, if you know the agenda and the ways of God, God don't do things suddenly like that, too. Suddenly, he just became rich. Suddenly, even Jesus started from a baby. The world that we see today started from a garden. All this suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. Go and find out. Hush puppy. Suddenly. Am I talking to you, youth? So that is not success. Because, you know, we celebrate success. And people will think they are successful because they just come suddenly from with money. In those days, if you have money too much, they will say, ask you, Ibolotirowo. But today, if you just travel and you came back with plenty money, ah, what is Oriere? Bolot is Oriere. Some of the things we call success is no Oriere, it's Oribu. I'm sorry, I'm not being abusive. So don't be moved by someone that just suddenly came. Most often than not, go and find out. Such people, as they suddenly came, they suddenly go. What success is not? Another one. It's not social media show off. Go borrow clothes. As well as so. So when you see people posting on the social media, that is not success. Don't kill yourself with that. Amen? Anything can happen on social media. If I go and take daddy's car now and I post with this mind, ship this thing, I do that here. And I post it. Hey, what's that much? What car? Did I buy a car? Praise God. Don't worry, I'll be soon buy a car that I can take picture with. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Youth, success is not a new dress. You know, some, some youths, once they get a new dress like this, they, they begin to walk. Some, you have no, that is not success. So. Or oh, you not. Know, do your this thing like this. It's not new dress, not new shoe. Some people can fail their test because they just bought one shoe for them. It has entered your... That is not success. It's not new shoe. When you are coming to church on Sunday, you wear the best of your clothes. That is not... I will see you in church. I know you don't like me, but we are friends now. So you know. Hallelujah. Number next. Success is not traveling abroad. There are people in that abroad. Of course, he's not poor. But then what they struggle. So the fact that I travel. Go and ask Jacob. He wanted to travel abroad to Egypt. He would have become poor, poorer. There are people who we heard their story. They came back. And by the time they came back, the people they left, they have passed them. So it's not about traveling abroad. That is not success. Hey, what am I here? What's it long? Some people both said lawyer, the way he has gone, that is the last time you will see him. Oh Lord Kuni. Because they will go and do illicit things. That is not success. So don't kill yourself. Hey, if I can just complete my paper, complete my paper. Some people, the paper they are completing, they are completing the paper of their penury. That is not success. Am I still talking sense to us? Number next. Success is not flaunting the achievements of your parents. My dad is Reverend Bodiamo. You don't know him. He has this. He has that. That is what some, some, some youths do in school. And you'll be walking like this. And it will enter your head. Even the book that you are supposed to go and learn in school, you will not succeed again. It's not flaunting what your parents... My dad is a professor of law. And so... If that daddy dies, can he transfer your certificate, the certificate to you? What are you? You, you. Flaunting. That is not success. Am I still talking sense to us? Success is not cheating to pass the examination. That one is crucial. You go and do GC in one bush, miracle center. It's not. 
They should not even call it miracle center. Failure center. Ni. What is miracle? Miracle is something that is done by God supernaturally. You, you go and cheat somebody right exam for you and you are taking the result around that you are the owner. You are, you are a failure. I'm sorry. I'm talking like this. But that is the truth. It's not passing your exam. You know what? I was in 100 level. Ah, I can't tell you my story enough. <laughs> when I had 197 in jam and they gave me geography. I didn't want to do geography. I put in for uh, political science. They gave me geography. I saw, after I spent seven years at home, I said, even if you give me Yoruba, I'll become. So I saw some students from Lagos do something, do 90 kinikas. Ah, me, no more we do it. no more to do it. Until the first semester, the first session, some of them did not come back. You know you need learning. The advice is compulsory. You know, if you advise me, I can say, I, I don't want your advice. If the advice you to withdraw, you need learning. But that will. So, where is all the 290? Our time in 290, we were the one that were left. So, success is not when somebody writes an exam for you or you went to Cardi Expo. I, do you know, I, I am among the youth. You see, we see the every exam now. Few days to the exam, you begin to see it on social media and you are copying it, a child of God, you are a failure. I have to tell you the truth, it is bitter. Somebody is copying it beside you, one on go, and you now have an A. That A is not for you, you are a failure. It is better to fail honorably and repeat than to pass through a dubious means and call yourself a, a, a success. That is not success. Amen to Jesus. Can I continue? So what is success? I put it in my own word. Success, in my own understanding, is the achievement of a set of goals or plans with the help of God. To advance your God-given purpose and to impart your word. I can preach for one hour on this word, this, this statement. Success is, do you know that I, you decided to come to church today and you are here? Do you know it's a kind of, it's a success on its own? When you have a set of goals, plans, it is little plans and goals that eventually result into uh, a conglomerate of success. We we'll see. Now, as we look at God. And don't, some things are key there. I said, with the help of God. Because some people help themselves. The people who cheat to write the exam, they, you know, with the help of God. To advance your God-given purpose. That is another statement that is so powerful. Because some people live the lives of others. They pursue the dreams of others. Unfortunately, most parents too. You allow your children to pursue your dream. The dream you could not achieve. What has God... See, I wanted to say this. It has been in my spirit before, but I forgot as I came up. But thank God the Holy Spirit has brought this. David. Even the parents did not see David. You know, you know, I've seen the Bible said the first man that introduced David to the palace. He said, I have seen David, the son of Jesse. Do you know what he has seen? He has seen a star, a king, a valiant man. Even the parents did not see anything. If they have seen anything, they will not push him to where he was. So, parents, I'm begging you, see your children. See, the fact that the son of Reverend Amo, Pastor Ayo, is a doctor does not mean that your son must be a doctor. What are you seeing? Because at times, what we call success is not success, it's failure. I can tell you the stories of people who became doctors and gave the certificate back to their parents. I have gone to school to do what you want me to do, but I'm not doing that. I'm going to be a tailor. Real life story. So what, are, what do you see even in your, in your children? Compare we go to school and say, I had a dream that my son became... Go and, go and fulfill the dream. If God wants him to be a doctor, 
The brain, we, we will see it. I'm digressing. She, I'm actually talking sense to us. Let me quickly talk about the mysteries of Susan because that is my intention. Number one, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Can you give me quickly? This signal is not working, but let me see it there. Genesis chapter what? The earth was without form. Abi, are we, are we together with me? And void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. What was it on the face of the deep? God decided in heaven that let me come and create heaven and earth. The first thing he met was darkness. Hmm. I don't know if you have seen darkness before. In, an, in, in a territory that you don't know, you become temporarily blind. The first thing mystery about success we need to learn from God is that most success don't start as a success. They start, they rather start as a problem. Most successes, they don't start, yeah, success, yeah, come, come, come. They start as a problem. God wanted to come and create heaven and earth. What he meant was darkness. He could have said, Duh. Yeah, let's go back home. This one that we are seeing, that I, I cannot even see anything. Let me go back. So the first mystery of success, don't run away from problems. No, that word is not, looks, looks stupid, but that is the correct thing. If Thomas Edison ran away after he had tried how many times, he ran away, you will not have light today. You will still be carrying your jango and your lantern around. People who succeed in life are problem solvers. So what problem are you solving? Once they give you one equation like this, you, your head is beginning to, you, you begin to say, I'm having a dick. You are running away from, from your success. Most successes are housed and closed in problems. Number two. Are we still here? Genesis 1-3. Genesis 1-3. Can we quickly have that? Then God said, let there be what? Let there be what? God bless you. I'm saying it now. Let there be light. Success stems from light. That is the next point. And light, I'm not talking about light only in the literary form. Insight into something is light. Some people just became millionaire, not suddenly, like I said. They discover something that, ah, what about, there was a man I read the story in Lagos who's, who became rich, carrying poo poo. Light. Ah, why is it I'm not thinking like this? Light. So, as a child of God, always seek for light. Even God could not do anything in darkness. If your life is in darkness, you cannot succeed. That is why education is so important. Light, knowledge, insight, understanding. Nobody succeeds in life without light. Even God could not create. Did God create anything before the light? No. The first thing that precedes all successes is light. Tell your neighbor, let there be light. I'm actually talking sense to us here. Number two, three, mystery of success. Success stems from self-discovery. It stems from where? If you discover yourself first, you can succeed in whatever area of your life you choose. I don't know whether it was here that I was sharing the story of one of our professors, Professor Adewale of blessed memory now, who said he started as a science student. I read one of his inaugural lecture, I saw it, and I was laughing alone. He said whenever they gather them in the science, you know, they ask them to look at something through the telescope or whatever. He said, and the biologist said, can't you see the cytosplamy? 
I can see it. Why did the go? I'm not seeing anything. Until he discovered that I am not of sciences. He was one of the best professors in theater arts all over Nigeria. Self discovery. What can you do? Don't pursue the goals of others. Somebody is singing. You have, you have squashing your voice and sing like uh, uh, Sebam and Esther. If I want to sing like them, be ready to pack my poopoo. But ask me to come and do drama. Even if I sleep, I did do drama. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Number next, because of time. I'm going back to, you know, I said I was going to be referring to God and who? Good, you are following. Genesis chapter 37 verse 5. Success. Okay, who is reading that? Okay, thank you. Jo- and now Joseph had what? Most successes starts with a dream. When I say dream, I am not talking about necessarily having to sleep. You can dream of something. Thomas Edison dreamt in his heart vision that there can be light now that we can put from up and call the book Bob. If a thing does not enter your heart, you can't succeed at it. So what is your dream? I'm asking you. What do you have dream to become in life? Or you are just living your life as it comes? Anything that comes. People like that don't succeed. Number next. Let's move on. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. Then as I read from verse 5, you give me verse 8. As I finish verse 8, 13. Let's see verse 5. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Go to verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Verse 13. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Every success needs to be planned for. God had a plan. Emmanuel is watching. First day, Kinama created, he created it. He went to sleep. Second day, what am I going to so Do you have a plan for your life? In fact, and it starts from daily. When, when you go out on a daily basis, what are your plans? If you cannot have a daily plan, you will not have a plan for your life entirely. I don't know how many of you have seen this video of, was it a soldier or a sailor, an American sailor, talking about if you want to make a great leader, you start with your bed, the way you lay your bed. I mean, I have seen that feature. Oh, you have not. But I'm talking about even God planned everything. First day, we will create this. Second day, we will create it. He didn't. The Kinika said, what should we do? Uh, <laughs> Kinika said, I just said, no, we will come back. That is the way some people live their life. You cannot succeed like that. Plan. Have a plan. This is what I'm going to do today. This is what I'm going to do today. And as you go out, see, people that don't have plans, you find them everywhere. They can go and do it. Oh, you go to the station. Oh, Because you don't have a plan. But if you, are, if you come to me, Kilo will say, Ufe Kawi, I want to read my book between now and now. Okay, Ufe the station. Okay, Molo. My plan. If you don't have plan, my brother and sister, some people that have plan will draw you to do their plan for them. So they will be fulfilling their destiny using you. Get sense. Am I abusive? Am I making sense to you? Hallelujah to Jesus. Hey, I'm not talking to the youth alone, no. Because some of us parents too, where we are today could be as a result of lack of plans. Even to the extent of the number of children you want to bear. No plan. You know, family planning. Everything that comes. I, you know, I, I used to wonder at my, our parents in those days, even my mommy. We are eight. 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 I'm the fourth one. I have four. Eight. Are you going to sell us? 
Praise God. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being funny. But that's the truth. Our plan. Our plan. When you get married, sit down with your husband, youth. Our plan. Okay? You will know. Number next. Are we still getting blessed? Genesis 1 3. We are talking about the mysteries of success from God. Then God said, God, if you want to succeed, confess success. If God has said, ah, what are they do? We cannot create anything. This one that I I cannot even see anything. Let's go back. He will go back. Once you open chemistry, ah, I cannot know this. He will not know it. You have said it. God said. And what God said is positive. Let there be light. And what happened? When he said, let there be light, darkness did not come. For if he said, let there be darkness, what will come? If you are saying, I cannot succeed, nobody can help you. So the next mystery of success is that success needs to be confessed. And I must tell you this, that even when you are confessing it, and you are facing something that looks, odd, I mean, uh, uh, opposite, confess the, the one you want. Because what God actually faced here was darkness. But he confessed light. Mass is, is difficult. Mm-mm. This mass is easy. To you, it is apparently difficult like darkness to God. But God is saying, what I want is, it is easy. And it became easy. Number next. Genesis 1-4. So, okay. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. If you read the subsequent, maybe verse 6 again. Everything God created, he took time to look at it. Is it good? To me, if it is not good, he will do it again. Some of you are so afasad. If I enter some of your rooms now, I will do like this, out. Success needs to be appraised. How many times have you taken your results at the end of the semester or session and see and compare it? That are what happened? I had eight A's now. Now I have six. What is happening? Or oh, I have P. How can I improve it? God was appraising himself each day. The Bible said, and we see that all he had made is good before he goes to sleep. So that by tomorrow, it will help him, it will assist him to do more. If you want to succeed, self-appraiser every day. Some, some of you, if they correct you, your mind will be like this. Like the, like you wrote to your town. <laughs> Am I being abusive? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank God I'm the one saying it. You cannot chase me. We are friends. Amen to Jesus. Another mystery of success is found in Genesis 37, verse 23 to 29. I will just paraphrase. Or can we quickly read it? My time. Hey, cut. Time. This is this clock working well. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic from of many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into where a pit. Go to the next class. And they sat down to eat. Can you imagine your brothers of the same blood? You are in the pit and they are eating and discussing over you. Then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there they saw a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm, and man. Go to the next one. <clears throat> and Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Continue. Come and let us sell him. I see with his yam. So the road to success, that is the next point, is not smooth. It's not smooth. We can ask Daddy here. You know, I thought Daddy would tell us the story of his first car that you have to push. But now, God forbid bad thing. But it was not smooth. So, because we have a generation of youth who wants everything to be rosy, 
everything. You just wake up. You imagine that I have a car. And unfortunately, the type of song that some of you listen to is not helping you. A minute of value go range. Kilo value go. Kilo value go range. Don't go to the Don't go to the Lord. Don't go to the Lord. Don't go to the Lord. You just listen and imagine and fantasize all your life. You will wake up from your dream one day and see poverty around you. The road to success is not easy. How many times have you taken time to say, I am going to read seven hours and you want to succeed? Go and ask the dangotis. The dangotis, the sleep, the, can, the sleep you sleep. Dangotis don't sleep that kind of sleep. And you want to succeed. And you are saying, dangotis, you make you, you make you. Success is not easy. It does not come easy. Ah, I don't have time. Number next. Another mystery of success. Genesis 29 verse 2. Genesis 39, sorry. 39 verse 2. My time is almost up. The Lord was with Joseph. And he was what? Every good success, God is involved. If you remove God from the equation of your success, you are a failure. Go and ask Nebuchadnezzar. Me, I built this Babylon and all of that. And immediately, an angel gave him a sound knock. And the father yesterday, the king yesterday, was eating grass the following day. Don't remove God from your success. You remember this story, the story of this Joseph who when the woman was casting eyes on him to have sex with her, with, with her, he said, how can I do this and do what? All along, what kept that guy going in the pit, in the prison, in Potiphar's house was God. How can a young man escape from sin if he does not retain God in a godless generation. Everything around us is now perverse. I beg you, some of you may not end up in Nigeria. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. If that is God's will for you. But don't allow any society, any America, any whatever to remove God from you. DSTV. Anywhere you have seen film that they put God, I don't know whether they have stopped that. They will block it, blocking God, but they will show pornography. That is the kind of generation. So, any success you have and you don't have God, you have nothing. That is that. If you forget anything I've said today, don't forget this. Become richer than Dan Gotti, and you have you don't have God, you are poor. You are a failure. Number next. Genesis 39 verse 2. The Lord was with him and he was a successful man. Okay? Is that? Okay. Uh -huh. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. What was he doing in the house? Is the Ogabi? Eh? How can the servant be a successful man? Mystery of success. The next mystery of success is that success is not tied to a location. If I get to America today, there are poor people in America. If you have God and you do the things, some of the things I have said, even if you are in the pit, you can succeed. It's not, it's, not, it's not a matter of where I am. Ah, if I can go to London, go to London. There are poor people in London. If your mentality is not that of a success, you go to London and your poverty will be more than that of Nigeria. Number next. Genesis 39, verse 7 to 12. And it came to pass after this thing that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph and she said, lie with me. You know it. The next point I want to say is that good success does not involve sin or compromise. I've asked this question severally to youth and teenagers when I teach them in class. That if you are just going and you see one bag full of money, 10 million, what will you do? You say, I will carry it and remove tight. 
you are a thief. Now your money. Or somebody is saying, if you can just change this figure for me, just add one zero, you become a millionaire and you buy cars, you are a failure. Every good success does not involve sin. This guy, I've told you the story before, will have be eating the food of a guy. As he's stopping madame, he's stopping the food of a guy at home because the guy is a politician. He's always in Abuja. But one day, he will die. They say stolen bread or stolen water or something is sweet. But at the end of the day, na, 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 na stone will be, they will be taking stone. So, anything that involves sin or compromise or compromise of faith and just ask something to eat or have sex with the lecturer or do this thing to pass, to be success, he's not a success. He's taking you for that to for that failure. That is not success. People can do it. You can watch it on social media. That's why you just do something and it will blow. You will blow in hell. You will blow in. Number next. Success is a mentality. Genesis 45 to 8. Can we quickly see that? Genesis 45 to 8. Genesis 40, verses 5 to 8. Are, are we there quickly? Then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream, both of them, each man's dream in one night, and each man's dream with his own interpretation. The next verse. And Joseph came in to them in the morning and looked at them, a prisoner looking at the other prisoner, and telling them their, their dream. Is mentality ni. If it was you and I in the prison, a cool has to throw out. The the guy, the first time we heard about Joseph, he had dream. The second time we are going to add anything about dream, he was interpreting dream. What happened? He, he had the mentality of success, even in the prison. No prison can imprison your success if you have that mentality. Out random. Success have enemies. Very important. I'm going to mention this and we will pray. Success have what? Enemies. Number one are external enemies. Genesis 27 verse 2b. Rab said, and his brothers, who, who, his brothers hated him for what? His dream. So you have success. You have enemies if you have success. Number two, enemy of success is inadvertent enemies. What do I mean by inadvertent? Your enemies that are your enemies, not deliberately. You remember the brothers of Joseph, I mean, David. You said, What are you doing on the battlefield? Go home. They were his enemy. You know, it was the Goliath he killed that made him to blow. I mean, if you had not killed Goliath, nothing would have happened. But the Goliath say, anything that is pushing you from your, your success is your inadvertent enemy. The brothers of uh, Joseph too. Those ones, they are deliberate. But there are some that we say, oh, they say you cannot do it. Even Saul told David, you cannot do it. Don't even allow your parents to, to, to push you down and say you cannot do it. Try it. Success is housed in several failures at times. Amen to Jesus. Another enemy of success is darkness. We saw that in Genesis 1 verse uh, 2. Abby. When God came to create heaven and earth, the beautiful things we hear on earth, the first thing that was covering it was darkness. So, if your life is dark, if you don't have, have Jesus in your life, your life is dark, you cannot succeed. You can get money, your money is not success. Sebi, you know. Number next, indolence. Proverbs 13, verse 4. The Bible says, the heart of an indolent man wishes to have, oh, I wish I become like Reverend Amo, but you are sleepy and snoring at 9.30 a.m., you cannot become like him. You are indolent. You cannot read. You just want to pass by all means. You cannot succeed like that. It's an enemy. Another enemy is sin. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, eh, anybody that hides or covers is sin. We know what? We not succeed. You may be hiding it and you are thinking you are succeeding. It's a matter of time. The day you, your failure will come, everywhere we know. And as I conclude because of time, in conclusion, I pray for you from today. Having got this understanding, you will be a success in all ramifications of life in Jesus' name. Let's bow down ahead as we pray. 
I want you to go before the Lord and ask him and thank him for another opportunity to hear his word. I may not be eloquent. I don't know how to speak the word of God, but then the one that I know how to speak, I have said it. Thank God for what he has deposited in you. And I want you to make a decision this morning that you will be a success. You will determine, come what may, I will succeed. Against all odds, I will succeed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, our Father, I want to thank you for this morning. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, give light to your word in the hearts of your people. And let this word bring about multiple increase, multiple result and reward and harvest in our lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.